Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, November 15th, 2022, and this evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, President Donald Trump is expected to announce his re-election bid for the 2024 presidential election. Now, Donald Trump has been floating with the idea of running for, uh, in his eyes, what would be uh, his second term in office. This would be a re-election bid. And the uh, standard uh, understanding of our election is that this would be a very, very fascinating uh I guess, matchup between President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden yet again four years later. Now, we've known that Trump has been floating the idea of running for a while now. Ever since he lost the 2020 election, it has been a very big deal that he might be considering running in 2024. And quite frankly, for a while, it looked like 2024 was all his. It looked like he was going to easily decimate any and every Republican opponent when it came down to the Republican presidential primary. And then when you advance to the general election, Donald Trump was polling significantly better against Joe Biden than he had been in the 2020 election, which was good news considering that Donald Trump only lost the 2020 election by about 44,000 votes across the swing states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. But beyond that, what you find in our, uh, or actually Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, I'm normally used to grouping in Michigan there, but in fact, it was not one of the closest races that time around. Actually, uh, correction again, it was Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona. I don't know why I was thinking about the blue wall for just a moment, but I was. Uh, but the point is, that Donald Trump for a while, on a personal level from my own prediction, I thought would be the next president of the United States. And allow me to understand or really unpack where that level of reasoning came from. When Donald Trump initially lost the election, he was an immediate and complete favorite amongst Republican primary voters when it came down to who they wanted to see running their party for the next four years and the four years after that, given that it was going into the 2024 election. And for a while, it looked like Donald Trump had solidified the vote. He was routinely polling at a bare minimum in the high 30s, which was a fluke poll. But beyond that, he was averaging in the 40s, 50s, and 60 percent. For reference and context, he won the 2016 Republican presidential primary with just 48 percent of the national popular vote. 48 percent is not the majority. The majority of the Republican primary voters, even after everybody had dropped out and all the votes were tallied uh, and many uncontested races, including some notable ones, such as California, with a very large Republican primary uh, uh, a composition and uh, electorate there, you found that Donald Trump still could not crack 50%. So it tells you that you do not need to win a majority in order to win the Republican primary, that a plurality is just fine, and Donald Trump in many ways had always been holding on strong. Now, Donald Trump's announcement really doesn't come as a shock to too many people. I think the way that he's been so heavily invested in the Save America PAC that has been funding candidates all across the country, his influence, his rallies, his, uh, you know, leading and, and domination of the Republican Party's headlines and uh, campaign events and whatever it might be has all indicated that he will be running for president. I've known since 2020 in my own uh, personal regard that he will be running for president yet again. Donald Trump is not someone who would give up the president see that easily. And it looks like, again, for a while that he had a great opportunity. Now, when Donald Trump refused to announce before the midterm elections, he ran a risk. He ran a risk that his nominees would fall through when it came down to the eventual election results. And it was a risk that I believe he thought was worth taking because there was still a very good shot, at least prior to the election, that we saw Republican victories across the nation and thought that they might hold through. Notable candidates would be Carrie Lake in Arizona or Blake Masters in Arizona or Herschel Walker in Georgia or Adam Laxalt in Nevada or all of these other candidates, Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. And for a while, leading into the November midterms, right up until Election Day, including on Election Day, all of the numbers, all of the polls told us that it was going to be a red wave. And Donald Trump, quite frankly, was going to take credit for that. And in a way, rightfully so, when you look at who he's nominated in these races, a lot of them won their primary simply because they were endorsed by Donald Trump. Imagine Blake Masters. He was facing off against Mark Burnovich in the Republican primary previously, was losing to him. Donald Trump swooped into the race. Blake Masters ended up winning. 
Dr. Oz was never meant to even be in this race. It was initially initially Sean Parnell who faced no real op opposition because of the Trump uh, endorsement. Sean Parnell removed himself from the race on his own accord. Dr. Oz entered in. Dave McCormick entered in. Kathy Barnett entered in. Donald Trump endorsed Dr. Oz. And what you found was that Dr. Oz won that primary by less than 1,000 votes out of 1.3 million cast. He encouraged Ron Johnson to run for re-election in the state of Wisconsin. And now Ron Johnson will be going on to serve another six year term. So in a way that was a victory for Donald Trump at the margin there is not something that Republicans can really gloat about. Herschel Walker, the field was cleared for him. Uh, you know, so essentially, you know, what I want you to take away from that, we're not going to go too deep into these elections, but that Donald Trump's influence was very, very strong. And the risk there was that the election results would end up the way they did now. Because instead of an Oz victory or a Masters victory or a Walker victory, their losses on the governor level, where he was really expected to shine through, just simply because a lot of these governor elections looked like they were going to uh, Republicans in uh, a very beneficial manner, you found that in these states, Donald Trump's endorsements did not help, and they also propelled people to victory that ended up losing. Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, he lost his race by 14, 15 points in a swing state. Tudor Dixon lost in a swing state by 10 to 11 points across the state. Tim Michaels, who received the nomination as well, you found lost to Tony Evers in the state of Wisconsin. In the state of Arizona, Carrie Lake was propelled to victory by Donald Trump. She lost her race to Katie Hobbs. All around, Donald Trump's endorsement, which won these Republicans their primaries, led to their ultimate defeats in the general election. So that is Donald Trump's legacy before we jump into our discussion about his 2024 presidential bid. Donald Trump's legacy is a legacy of losing in the midterms, a losing uh, legacy in 2018, 2020, and now 2022. So today, Donald Trump is expected to announce his 2024 bid. How do we know this? Well, with a lot of articles coming out, Showing Ron DeSantis in new polls, you can actually see it here on the overall graph, Ron DeSantis now defeating Donald Trump on the national level. Quite frankly, he is scared. And we've known for a while that Donald Trump was floating the possibility of announcing before November 14th. In the summertime, he floated the possibility of announcing on the 4th of July or on Labor Day or whatever it might be on a historic holiday for America that he would be announcing his re-election bid. But he decided to postpone until after the midterm elections, and this is where I really think he made a mistake. Because if he announced before the midterm elections and the Republicans lost the midterm, sure, he would have been negatively impacted. But at the same time, he could make the argument that he was always going to be running for president and that this was not some type of opportunistic uh, you know, takeaway because Ron DeSantis is now trouncing him in the polls. The narrative is now, not only did Donald Trump want to lose the 2022 midterm elections or cause the loss, but rather that he will now cost the loss in 2024. I don't think it would be too different if he had announced before the midterms or after. But what I do think is that this seems very retaliatory, even though it wasn't, due to the new numbers out that show Ron DeSantis leading, which isn't super important, but it definitely can explain the psyche behind what Republican Party voters are now thinking now that in some polls they show Ron DeSantis ahead of of Donald Trump. It's a fascinating, fascinating uh, convergence here because Ron DeSantis never once led in a poll against Donald Trump. And right after the midterm elections, voters do not seem to be too happy with the president of the United States or the former president of the United States. And it says here, the potential announcement is planned for November 15th. And as the sighting says, Donald Trump has been floating this quote, very big announcement at Mar-a-Lago in Florida, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And again, we can very much guarantee that Donald Trump is running for president and will announce this evening, unless this very big announcement is that they lost the midterm elections, which obviously would not be his take. With a lot of these other Republicans here who have publicly expressed interest, a lot of them have decided and said publicly that should Donald Trump run, they would not run for president of the United States. Notable names like Nikki Haley, notable names across the Senate, across the House, but one notable name that has yet to speak on the matter to the extent that he should have is Governor Ron DeSantis. He refused to say whether or not he would serve out a four-year term as governor, meaning that he might be running for president in 2024. He refused to say that he would not run if Donald Trump was to run. 
And there seems to be increasing beef and, uh, you know, tension between DeSantis and Trump, more so one sided on Donald Trump's level being against Ron DeSantis. But altogether, there clearly is some very, very strong tension. Donald Trump, quite frankly, is afraid of Ron DeSantis. But with this announcement tonight, it may make it clear to voters that if Donald Trump was to run for president of the United States in 2024, he would be doing it now. He would be starting this campaign now, which means all of these Republicans that were floating the possibility of challenging him no longer would do it. Because he's starting so early, it gives him the advantage of being, again, front-facing on the mainstream media, scrutinized by the Democrats, which in turn electrifies the Republican primary base for Donald Trump. The moment that the mainstream Democrats turn on Trump to the extent and turn up the dial, because they obviously have already been against Trump, but the moment that they start to hound and hound and hound, that will be a warning sign to these Republicans that, hey, they need to back him. Because he's now under scrutiny, because now he's the main focus, they're going to go for him. And I can guarantee you, there will be Republicans here that may hold off on an endorsement, but many that will, in fact, endorse him immediately. Because they want to ride the Trump train to victory yet again, they are going to jump on it now rather than later. Because anybody that opposes Donald Trump in 2024 and endorses his opponent, I can guarantee you if Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of the United States, they are going to be primaried quite easily. For instance, you can find that Cynthia Loomis, the Republican senator from uh, Wyoming, uh, she's one of them, has already endorsed Governor Ron DeSantis. She said that Donald Trump should not be the nominee and rather that it should be Ron DeSantis. And now she's endorsed him. And I can tell you now, if Donald Trump wins his election, she was first elected back. Uh, what does it say here? Uh, in uh, 2020, in 2026. Donald Trump will float the idea of primarying her because he will be angry, because he will be upset that she went out against him. And a lot of other Republicans see the presidency in their future. Ask Nikki Haley behind closed doors, right? Ask Chris Christie. Ask even people like Mike Pence, Larry Hogan, Tim Scott. A lot of them see the presidency as an end goal. And quite frankly, they've already seen Donald Trump do it. So why not jump onto his train? Why not jump on to the possibility that Trump could be reelected and that you would be elevated? to an even higher position of power should you agree with him, should you jump on to his campaign. Donald Trump announcing tonight is something that I want many people to watch because I think it will truly start our presidential election cycle. It is beginning this evening. Even C-SPAN calls it to be, which is a very nonpartisan organization. There is no benefit at inaccurate reporting here. They say former President Donald Trump is making a campaign announcement at Mar-a-Lago. But when you look at the actual link to it, you find that it says Trump 2024 campaign announcement. And that's quite frankly, exactly what it's going to be unless we've been entirely shaken up or misled by President Trump, which wouldn't be the first time he's definitely floated the idea of running before. But this time it has become very serious. And I think Donald Trump knows that if he does not announce now, someone else could jump into the race and start to garner support. I think what Donald Trump wants to do is clear the field, eliminate all competition, and be the assured and promised nominee for the 2024 presidential election. Unfortunately for him, these abysmal and, quite frankly, horrible showings in the 2022 midterms make it a lot more difficult for Republican primary voters to back him because they have seen what his nominees have done for the party, and not only have they done nothing, they have lost the midterm elections for them. The Democrats are at their highest point in governors in quite a while, even higher than 2018. Democrats will now have 24 governor mansions by the end of this election. 24. My prediction had them at 21. Republicans at 29, down to 26. From 29 to 21, to 26 to 24, not a good look at all for the national Republicans, but specifically not a good look for President Donald Trump, who elevated most and many of these candidates to positions of uh, notability, to positions of prominence within the Republican Party. Without the endorsement, Dr. Oz would have never won that race in Pennsylvania. And quite frankly, Democrats might have never been able to win it either. If Mark Burnovich was able to be the nominee in Arizona, or better yet, Doug Ducey, Arizona likely would be red. The point is, if Donald Trump did not endorse many of these candidates, I can guarantee you 
that the Republicans would have done a lot better. Because it wasn't a red wave to an extent that voters did not care who was nominated. If that was the case, Donald Trump would be in a very good position for his 2024 bid. Unfortunately for him, almost all of his mainstream candidates in swing states have lost their elections or will go on to lose on December 6th, and it will be a very cataclysmic showing for President Trump, who loves to tout his success rate across the nation that will no longer hold true and thus render him to be someone who is a poison and a pain to the Republican Party, but he will also be very likely the first to announce his candidacy to challenge President Joe Biden. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.